Okay, we have two positive numbers, x and y, such that their sum is 50, and we want to maximize and minimize the quantity y minus 1 over x. Now, this function that we're trying to maximize and minimize has two variables, and we can't deal with that just yet. Uh, in a calculus one class, we can only maximize and minimize functions of one variable. So what we'll do is we can solve this equation here for say y, and we can plug that value for y into this function right here, and maybe we can give that function a name, I'll call it f, and that now is what we're trying to maximize and minimize. Which of course means taking a first derivative and looking for critical points. To take that first derivative, I thought of 1 over x as x to the negative first power, and then when I took its derivative, it got a negative 1 out in front, and the power became a negative 2, which I then wrote like this. So as far as critical points are concerned, this first derivative is undefined when x equals 0, so we're going to have to look at that point. And as far as the other critical points are concerned, we can set the first derivative equal to zero. We can solve for x then, and I'm getting x is positive one and negative one. So we have these three critical points that we need to test. Let's also go back to this original function and discuss an interval. So the problem says that x and y both have to be positive, which would mean that zero would be the smallest value that would work for x, and I guess 50 would have to be the largest possible value of x. Now when we're dealing with finding absolute maxima and minima of a function on an interval, that interval really should be closed. But if x and y both have to be positive, then this interval wouldn't allow us to include x equals zero, because zero is not a positive number. The interval would also not allow us to include x equals 50 because that would make y equals 0. So if we want this interval to be a closed interval, we're going to have to make a quick edit to this problem. And instead of using the word positive, we should use the word non-negative. Maybe that's a technical distinction there, but a non-negative x and y value allows our x and y values to be 0. So that closes our interval off. And I think this is probably the intention of the problem. And now that we've completed our interval, we should point out that x equals negative 1 doesn't fall on that interval. So we're simply going to test the critical point 0, 1, and also our endpoints by plugging those x values into our function and seeing what happens. So if we try to plug x equals 0 into this function here, we're going to get a 0 in the denominator, so that doesn't work. If we plug x equals 1 into our function, we're going to get 50 minus 1 minus 1, which is 48. And if we plug our x value of 50 into this function, we're going to get 50 minus 50 minus 1 over 50, which is negative 1 over 50. What I'm now concerned about is this undefined value when x equals 0. I think we need to investigate that a little bit further because it matters if this function is going to infinity or negative infinity. So what we really need to do is find a limit as x approaches 0 from the right, because our x values need to be non-negative, of the function 50 minus x minus 1 over x. You'll notice that as x goes to 0, we get 50 minus 0 minus infinity. So this limit is actually negative infinity. So we technically don't have an absolute minimum of this function. You can just continue to choose values of x that are closer and closer to 0 to get smaller and smaller function values. So there is no absolute minimum, but we do have an absolute maximum in this interval of 48. And to summarize, we have a maximum value of our function and it's 48, that maximum value occurs when x equals one, and then that would correspond to a y value of 49. Because of course, x and y have to add up to 50. And of course, we should make the note that there is no absolute minimum of this function on this interval, because the function goes to negative infinity. Okay, I think that does it.